Good morning, guys. Today we'll be doing our ELA. We're going to our activity book, page 117. Should be a chart like this. It says notes on Richard Henry Pratt and Luther Standing Bear. Okay. Now, we read this in the previous lesson. So today, we're going to reread a little bit of it. I won't reread all of it. I'll get us to the spots that give us um, the answers. And then we can answer them accordingly. Okay? So what we're doing is comparing each of these under the same things. Okay? Same uh, topics. So an example of comparing someone would be like comparing the color of my shirt to the color of someone else's shirt. Or comparing... The color of my hair to someone else's hair. You'd have, you may or may not have two different answers, but um, you're comparing two different things, okay? Whether it's a difference or it's a similarity. So today, on this one, they want us to compare Richard Henry Pratt and Luther Standing Bear. The first box says experience is a young person that shapes him. The second is the relationship to the Carlisle Indian industrial school and the last one is the real reaction to the idea of abandoning Native American culture okay so it might sound a little difficult at first but I'll go through each of these and get you all your answers um, as long as you follow along with me okay so they had already filled in the first one under Richard Henry Pratt they put an example had to leave school and work in order to provide for his parents they already filled that in so now we need to find out what kind of experience has a young person shaped Luther Standing Bear? So I will go to Luther Standing Bear first. So we can figure out his experience. Me where? Um, okay. So here we go. When Luther was born, he was named Plenty Kill because his parents thought he had the heart of a hunter and warrior. He was born in the Black Hills of South Dakota in 1868. Back then, many Lakota and other Sioux tribes were still at war with the U.S. Army. Plenty Kill lived on a reservation. Does that tell us he had experience that shaped him? No, that's what all of them went through. But he was raised according to the old traditional ways. He learned to hunt buffalo and ride a horse. He also learned to fight. Plenty Kill's father was a great warrior. He called the U.S. soldiers long knives because of the swords carried by the cavalry offices, officers like Richard Henry Pratt. When Plenty Kill was a boy, his father made a bow and arrows for him. The bow and all the arrows were painted red as a sign that his father had been wounded in battle. Plenty Kill grew up expecting that he too would someday fight and possibly die in battle along with the, against the long knives. However, his father did not really want his son to become a warrior. Like many other Lakota, he was tired of fighting. Instead, he wanted something different for his son. Okay, here we go. Then one day, Richard Henry Pratt came to talk to them about the Carlisle School. Pratt took Plenty Kill's father and other tribal elders to visit the new school. On a trip, they also went to New York City, Washington, D.C. They met the President of the United States, the grandfather of the Long Knives. When Plenty Kill's father returned from his trip, he said, My son... Since I have seen all those cities and the way the Long Knife people are doing, I begin to realize that our lands and our animals are all gone. There is nothing but the Long Knives everywhere I went. And they keep coming like flies, so we will have to learn their ways in order that we may be able to live with them. You will have to learn all that you can, and I will see that your brothers and sisters follow on the path that you are making for them. Someday I want to hear you speak like these Long Knife people and work like them. So... Plenty Kill went to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, along with 146 other Native American children. There he chose his first name, Luther, at random. He could not yet read, but the teacher ordered him to choose it anyway, and Luther was the one he chose. So the teachers forced all the boys to cut their hair. The boys were very angry, did not understand. But after their haircuts, the children also received new clothing. They had never worn this touch, the the tight, scratchy garments, and they were very uncomfortable. The worst part is that they were not allowed to speak their own language. The children were only allowed to speak English. Luther was a very fast learner, though, and he grew to enjoy reading and writing. So, his father did not want him to become a warrior. Okay, 
So Luther, what shaped him is he wanted to learn how to do what? Read and write. Okay? So this is how your sheet looks like. Okay? And then you have boxes over here. Then you have like writing in here. Oh wait, that's they did two different boxes. Okay. And this is stuff that's already there. Experience as a young person. Okay, you already have that relationship. Carlisle School. The last one says reaction. And then at the top up here on yours says Luther Standing Bear, and over here says Richard Pratt. And they already filled in this part. Um, had to leave school to provide for family. Had to leave school to provide for everything's filled in for you now i will write in blue for us all teal okay the answer so experience as a young person what did luther want to do he realized that he wanted to learn to what why did he want to go to this school and whatnot Learn to read learn to read and write. Okay. The next one is the relationship to the Carlisle Indian Industrial School. So um get here that way we do not have to read okay here we go the relationship to the school Pratt gathered support for his idea and eventually he convinced Congress to give him some money to open an experimental school the US Army agreed to let him use an old barracks in Carlisle Pennsylvania Pratt converted the buildings there into the Carlisle Indian Industrial School at this school, Native Americans were learning to speak, read, and write in English. They would also learn about U.S. history and customs such as Thanksgiving and the 4th of July. So what did Carlisle, I mean uh, Pratt, do for the Carlisle? How was he um, part of the school? He was the one that started it, right? So, in this next box over here under Richard Pratt, Started the school. Okay. And what did we already knew about Luther Standing Bear? We already read a little bit about it. Where was how was uh, Luther Standing Bear related to the Carlisle School? What did he do? He attended it, right? Attended the school. Yeah. He attended it. Now the last one says the reaction to the idea of abandoning Native American culture. Now, Richard Pratt, he did not abandon it because he wasn't part of Native American culture. He was a, a, an American at that point, right? So he doesn't have a reaction. Let's see the reaction of um, Luther, okay? Luther went on to live a full and fascinating life. Despite efforts by Pratt and the teachers at the Carlisle School, Luther never forgot his native language and customs. 
He never cut his hair again either, and he did not think any other Native American should have to. Luther spent the rest of his life working to preserve the Lakota heritage. He wrote books and gave speeches, and he even became a movie actor. He tried to make sure Hollywood film directors portrayed Native Americans in a fair, honest way, instead of always presenting them as villains or savages. Luther believed in the importance of education, and he was always grateful to Pratt for that chance to attend his school. However, Luther did not agree that Native Americans should abandon their culture. So, the reaction, was he okay with people abandoning Native American culture? No. He... Believed in education, but not to lose customs. Okay. He did not want to lose the customs. Better for you guys. You guys probably can't see it very well. Yes. Okay. So that is for the work today. Okay. Tomorrow, oh wait, yeah, tomorrow we'll answer the questions, okay? Tomorrow we got these two questions we're going to answer, tomorrow, okay? So you guys have to keep getting this work done. You can't skip out on this work. It needs to be done because we've been announced now that school is going to be closed for the rest of the school year. So this is how we're doing the rest of the school year, and we don't want to fall behind in any way, right? So if you need help, ask me, but you have to get this work done, right?